Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments every day with the Master in the Word of God. Thank you so much for being with me as we continue the theme that has been our focus of this entire week, and that is the serenity prayer, how to have peace when your life is going to pieces. This beautiful prayer penned by the pastor, theologian, Reinhold Niebuhr in the midst of the Depression when everyone's life was going to pieces, when unemployment was like 25%, in the black community, unemployment was like 50 to 60% or higher. Everything was going to pieces, but he wrote this prayer to say, look, you can still have peace when life is going to pieces. It's a powerful prayer. And our serenity verse in the Bible is Psalm 46, verse 10. This is the path to, to peace and serenity. Let go of your concerns, let go, which means surrender, then you will know that I am God, I rule the nations, I rule the earth. To say rule means that God is still in control. The throne of heaven is not vacant. The throne of heaven has an occupant, and that is God who loves you. Now, up to this point, we've been kind of on the front porch of this serenity prayer. We just, we've learned who wrote the prayer, when it was written. Uh, we've learned what ser serenity is and what peace is, and that you're only as happy as you want to be. We've been on the front porch of 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 this prayer now we're going to move off the front porch and we're going in the house we're going to actually look at the lines in the prayer and there are basically three lines today let's look at line one line one of the serenity prayer says god it starts with god god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change that is the first prayer uh, in this this uh, serenity prayer. And I think that besides the word God, that, that is the preeminent word in this prayer, God, 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 who is, who is uncontrollable, God, who um, was uncreated. Think about that. No one created God. God is uncreated. God is uncontrollable. God is ungovernable, which is to say that I'm governed by weather. If it gets cold, I got to put on a coat, but nothing changes God. God is ungovernable. And not only is God ungovernable and unchangeable uh, and uncreated, but God is unstoppable. So the important word is God. The second most important word in line one is accept. There are some things that you will never have peace about until you come to the agreement that you have to accept it. I wanted to be a, a, a basketball player. You know, I dreamed of being in the NBA. At one time, I was a pretty good baller. I mean, I could, I could do the thing. I was a pretty good baller. I could still shoot that jumper. But the only NBA I was ever going to be drafted to was the Neighborhood Basketball Association. So I accepted that. And it's a wonderful thing when you're comfortable in the skin that you're in and you accept reality. Now, until you accept some facts that there's some things you cannot change, until you really get it in your spirit, this I cannot change. You will never have peace. Or to transition to the Lord's Prayer, this is the, the line one in the Lord's Prayer is this, thy will be done. Now, whenever you pray the Lord's Prayer and you say thy will be done, you're saying something without saying it. You're saying, number one, God has a will. God has a will. Secondly, you're saying, I have a will. Thirdly, you're saying that sometimes God's will and my will don't agree. And fourthly, when you pray thy will be done, you're praying, God, during those times that your will and my will don't agree, help me to accept your will. And serenity comes when accepting God's will, accepting reality the way reality is. Go back to the to that serenity prayer. It's an extended prayer. We're looking at line one, but I want you to see the second part of the prayer, which starts off saying, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting, there it is again, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, 
taking as he did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Stop here. Listen to me. There's a lot of things you want to happen. There's a lot of ways in which you wish the world was structured and ordered, but it's not the case. And to come to grips with the fact that, um, and accept that, I accept it, that's the path of peace. Which means that once you accept some realities about people, about life, about your situation, once you accept that there are some things you cannot change, then you begin to reorganize and reprioritize your concerns. You're not prioritizing the things you cannot change. You're not organizing your right life, trying to change some things we cannot change. Let me tell you why many of us are tired. We're tired because we give too much emotional energy to the things we cannot change. Let me tell you why we're sometimes unproductive. Not only because we give too much emotional energy to the things we cannot change, because we give all that energy, we don't have enough energy to give it to the things we can change, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Serenity is not irresponsibility. It's not a responsibility. It's just saying, well, you know, um, I can't do anything about it. it it's, it's acknowledging that there are some things that you cannot do anything about. And you just trust God to do what you can't do. Do what you can. Trust God to do what you can. I, I close. I once and maybe you've seen it demonstrated where this famous artist, great artist, who would invite children to come up and he would give them something to write with and say, no, just write on my canvas. And they would write on his canvas and just scribble all over his canvas. And it was nothing but scribble. And then after they would scribble on his canvas, he would then start with their scribble. And he would add something to their scribble. It's, and once he finished working with their scribble, because of his skill set, he was able to take the scribble and produce something that was extraordinarily beautiful. Now, he did not say, now, in order for me to do something beautiful with your scribble, I got to erase your scribble because the scribble is there. And many of us will say, well, if God, if you would really erase my scribble and get rid of the scribble of my past and the scribble of my past, of, of my bad mistakes and bad decisions, if you could just get rid of the scribble, then maybe I could be peaceful. God says, no, you can't get rid of the scribble. The scribble is there and it's been written with permanent ink. But if you trust me, just like I took that child's scribble and integrated my, my gifts, my abilities and produce something beautiful out of it. You bring me your scribble, I won't get rid of it, but I'll begin to work with your scribble and I'll produce something beautiful with your scribble. I have a friend who's a pastor, well, he's not a pastor, but he's working on his PhD and his name is Jimmy Butts. He will soon be Dr. Jimmy Butts. And he taught at Simmons College uh, a semester. He's absolutely brilliant, amazing. And um, before we hired him at Simmons, he said to me, he said, uh, Kevin, there's something I need to tell you. I said, what? He said, I was in the penitentiary. I did something, made a mistake, went in the wrong direction. I'm in, in the, I was in the penitentiary. But I felt the call to preach and I went on and started studying and I got my bachelor's degree and master's degree and now he's finishing up a PhD at the University of Louisville but he was incarcerated brilliant young brother and if he were doing this powerful point to ponder he would say you know God didn't erase my scribble my scribble was the fact that I was in the penitentiary but God took my scribble and began to write something design something, produce something, and now my life is emerging beautiful, something beautiful. I'm going to be Dr. Jimmy Butts. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Know that God doesn't erase your scribble, but God does make something beautiful out of it if you let God. Let's pray together. Thank you, O oh Lord, 
and help us to accept right now some things we cannot change in our past, in our present, and our future. Thank you, Lord, that while we can't get rid of the scribble, the lines we've written in our life that are so ugly, you are the master artist that's able to take the ugly things we've done and make something beautiful out of it. Grant that it might be so for those who are hearing this message today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me. Another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a digital disciple here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Email us. We will get back with you. New start at ssclive.org. Peace and blessings to you. And uh, we'll pick up on this tomorrow. But until then, remember during COVID-19 to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget God is in control. Peace and blessings to you.